So this is an exclusive video just for you and it's explaining to you how half tone stamps work, how best to use them and showing you an example of this with my brand new leaf background from the Spring Awakening collection and also the coordinating cover plate die which is what we call a die when it's a large panel so some people might call it a background die but we've got the two, they work beautifully together as you can see examples of here but they also work on their own too. So let's start with the stamp. As soon as you see the stamp, it's large, and I wanted to give you a large stamp so you can cut it down, trim it to fit whatever size cards you prefer to make. Now, because it's half tone, you kind of get this grainy gray look to the packaging, but when it stamps, trust me, it looks absolutely beautiful. The reason it's grainy is that half tone effect. Now, this means that this stamp is going to give you shadows and shading with one impression. I tend to like to go over two or three times to build the colour up, but if you're in a hurry and you just want to stamp this once, it's going to work so perfectly. We saw this with my very popular Magnolia Drive half tone stamp, which was the first one I bought you in the textures range, and that flew. It's We've sold that out three times. I don't know if it's coming back. Fingers crossed, but for now, let's concentrate on this one instead. So, a full leafy background. Now, of course, leaves we can use for lots of different seasons. We could make them festive with frost on. We could make them for spring with the bright colours. We can make them autumnal with the oranges. So I've put my leaf stamp on my stamping platform. Now I always tend to stamp onto a piece of foam. It's a very thin piece of foam as well. This just allows me to really press into the paper. Now the cardstock that I'm going to be using for this technique is a watercolour one and this is my go-to pad. Um, it will be linked in the description for you. It's A5. It's a really good heavyweight watercolour cardstock. Um, I just absolutely love it and it's quite a bright white. It's not as white as your general cardstock would be. It still has that slight off-white colour but it's the brightest I can find. Such good quality as well. So I'm going to place this inside, inside my stamping platform. I've got a tiny any little bit of double-sided tape under the rubber mat and also just on here in fact I might just put a little bit more that's starting to wear now it's the tiniest amount that's just going to help me hold my paper still because I'm working in um, an A5 platform with an A5 piece of cardstock and an A5 stamp there isn't room for magnets with this one so I'm needing to keep that still in another way if you have an old uh, scan and cut or Cricut mat an electronic cutting mat something like that um, you could cut that to size adhere it to your base and use that the tack on that to hold your cards or paper still too. So I'm just checking that this is going to go onto my cardstock okay. Yeah, that will fill perfectly. And now we're going to ink this up. Now I'm going to ink it up a few different times. Um, I tend to use Distress inks. Now a lot of you, if you know me already, you know I love uh, my Distress Oxides and I've kind of converted from inks to oxides over the years. But for this technique, I am bringing back my inks. I just find they blend a little better. You cannot use oxides, absolutely. And I believe I did use oxides for this one. But I find you get a little easier blending with the inks for whatever reason, probably because they are a dye rather than um, any pigment sitting in there. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go with lots of greens, maybe a hint of yellow in there, but not too much. So I'm going to start with, let's start with my lightest colours. So let's start with Wild Honey. And I'm just going to ink a couple of patches in here. I'm doing small dabs. I'm not going to be, um, try, oh, I'm trying not to leave any areas that are uh, like a line of colour. So I'm sort of overlapping my colours. I'm not worried about contaminating my ink pads. This should be absolutely fine. Go around the edges. And what's going to happen is the stamp is actually made up. It's not a solid material. It's actually made up of lots and lots of tiny little dots. These dots are really close together in some areas and they're really far apart in others. So because of that, that's where you get that light and dark. Okay, so with this darker one, I'm starting to get some lines. So I'm just going to pop back to this one and help mix them. There we go. So where there's shading in the stamp, those dots that I spoke about will be really close together. Where there's not shading, where there's light highlights, the dots are going to be much further apart, leaving areas of white of the paper to come through. So hopefully that makes sense. 
So this is my first layer. I'm going to stamp this one dry for you, just so that you can see what this looks like when it's stamped without any water. You'll really see the pixelization. You'll see, I don't even know if that's a word, the dots. You'll see the dots in the stamp here. Now I've inked this a couple of times with the same few colors, re-stamped it, and you can start to see the image coming through. Because this is dry, as, as such, using dry ink, not using added water, it takes a little bit longer to build this up and you can see where the image is coming along. It looks stunning. You can start to see those darker areas as well as the highlights in the leaves. But I'm massively going to speed up this process. So what I would tend to do is, let me just turn this over. Let's use the other side of this cardstock instead. And we'll start afresh. So this time I'm going to spritz my watercolour cardstock with a little bit of water, just a light mist, and allow that to start working as such. I'm going to come over to my stamp and again I'm going to apply lots of ink to this in the few colours that I've chosen, making sure to go right the way to the edges, making sure that there's no missed spots, but again you will probably stamp this two or three times anyway so if you do miss an area or you can't see that you've missed an area I wouldn't worry too much. So just adding some yellows in there as well and at the moment I can't quite see with an ink it's very hard to see on the stamp where you've applied it with an oxide it's much easier. I'm also going to take my water and I'm going to give a light mist to the stamp too to that ink and then I'm going to fold this over and press it down. And I'm going to hold it down, okay? I'm going to lift up a couple of times, keep pressing and allow that ink to really kind of smooch and mix on the surface. Now again, the image is going to be darker uh, where the dots are close together on the stamp and lighter where they're not. Okay, so because I didn't tack that down, that is on there. So just press that down, lift that up. And look at that, isn't that just absolutely stunning? So that's one impression, and do you know what? I don't even think I want to do another one. I think I'm quite happy. Let's just lift off the excess with a piece of tissue just so you can see the dry image. Isn't that beautiful? So, so pretty. If you want to do a jungle theme, a spring garden theme, anything like that, you can then cut this into areas. So we've got our much darker, deeper version. Again, I would definitely be building that up a little bit more if I was using the dry ink, but with the wet ink, that is the effect. I obviously put a lot more of the paler green and the yellows in there, but you get the idea. So then moving on to the coordinating cover plate die. Now we call a cover plate one that is a large panel. It fills the background. So I'm going to cut this, which is huge. But again, you can trim it into areas if you want to. I'm going to cut this from Gold Mirror Card. This is um, a kind of a technique that I've been doing with this dye ever since I got it. I love it in white, in black, in greens, but I also really, really like it in gold. So definitely stock up on your mirror card. And just pop this down onto the surface of the mirror card there, and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'm going to be using an A5 um, Sizzix, so that's the smaller plate one, the standard size, it does go through that. I call it A5, it's probably a little bit larger than that, but it goes through the standard size big shot absolutely fine. So then just peeling this off the back, just a tip for you, if you've got a detailed die cut like this and you're in a hurry, you need to be crafting with it straight away without spending too long popping pieces out, if you bend your cardstock up away from the die as you peel it off, you get a lot more stays within the die rather than staying within the die cut. You can then clean your die out a little bit later if you want to, when you've got more time. Like I say, if you are into speedy crafting, that's the best way to do it. Look, isn't that absolutely stunning? Now, the die that I showed you cutting here is actually a die that will cut into your cardstock, so it doesn't have an outer cutting edge. But what it does have in the pack is the outer outline border as an additional die if you want to cut it down to size. 
there's one more bit there just pop that out so I've actually cut that in without the outer die now a really good example of this is from Monica who's on my uh, texture design team she's actually cut this into the card base placed vellum behind it and paper pieced some of those leaf colors back in it looks absolutely stunning it really does I mean amazing job Monica but that's a really good example of showing you how it cuts into the base if you want it to another example is just here where I've actually then used the outline die to cut it out afterwards and placed it on directly on top of my card now if we come back to the stamp you'll see that the two layer together absolutely perfectly you've got the highlights and you've got the shadows in there of the leaves individually they look so so beautiful now once you adhere this on whether you use it on its own or together with the stamp you can then be creating cards like this because you can actually cut into it let's just remove that little bit of gold there that must have flicked in um, so you can cut into it to create shapes frames you could cut a piece out from the center if you wanted to you could make it into a shaker card or you can use the full background so let me know in the comments which one's your favourite of the three different styles that I've got here. Which way would you be using the inking? And if you'd like to take a look at this set, uh, including the rest of the Spring Awakening collection, you'll find all of that on Craft Stash, and I'll pop a link to that down in the description below for you. Thank you for joining me for this exclusive video, and I hope to see you again very soon.